Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explore, we're going to take a look at bringing 3D into Zim. Does that sound fun? So let's take a look now at an example. Here we have a 3JS model that's inside of Zim, and we can use a Zim swiper to swipe that around. And there's an indicator down here. We'll show you what that's for in just a second. Now, uh, we were doing this for a code pen challenge on an image gallery. So as we spin this, oh, it's a different image. Isn't that neat? Whoosh. And uh, there's Dr. Abstract partying, yes. Or we can press on the a uh, little indicator here. So we're using Zim controls, Zim components to uh, manipulate a 3JS model. Now 3JS has its own uh, orbit controls and various things like that, but um, we brought this in uh, from a Zim example where we had a color picker here and we were using the color picker to change the color of the phone. We had a dial here where we could change the rotation and a slider for the scale. So sometimes you might want uh, component controls uh, at which point you can bring 3JS into Zim and manipulate it here inside of Zim. So let's go take a look at some code, shall we? That sound exciting? All right, so we're in Zim. We're bringing in CreateJS and Zim and also 3JS. This is a slightly older version of 3JS, but uh, that doesn't matter too much. And then this is 2.0 is the Zim helper, which lets us easily load in 3JS and scale the models to fit uh, properly and change scale as, as the Zim frame changes as well. And then we're bringing in the phone data as well. We'll talk a little bit about that later. That's for the model of the phone. All right, coming on down here, I don't know if you noticed the background there of that. We've got green, that's a Zim green, and then we've got this darker color. What we've used is a color range to go from green to black, and so we're 0 0.3 of the way between those two things, and that's our outer color, so that's a way to darken it. You could also lighten it if you wanted to by saying white here, and then we're 0 0.3 of the way to white and you would see a lighter green in the background and a darker green in the front. All right, we're, we're loading in Zim frame, getting a stage and stuff, and then here is the way that we're creating the 3JS uh, scene and camera, as you'll see. So we're making it a new Zim 3. By the way, the code in behind here is uh, three, making a 3JS uh, canvas and setting up the render and the WebGL and all this kind of stuff. And it's like maybe 10 lines of code of pretty gnarly looking stuff. So I think this simplifies it a fair bit. And if that, if we do have WebGL, if that's successful, then we're gonna do this stuff. If we don't, it would pop up a pane saying, sorry, we need WebGL. So that's your basic structure for bringing in 3JS into Zim. And then we're given a a scene, so we're storing this locally, a scene in a camera. We did do this for a uh, code pen example, code pen gallery, and when we transferred it over into code pen, we adjusted it to ES, or ES6 there. So uh, we, those would be consts, for instance, and this thing would be an arrow function, otherwise it wasn't really that much different. Okay, so now the data we're bringing in, if we want to peek at that, it's a JSON data for a phone, so there it is, and it's got some objects within it, and there's a bunch of stuff on the geometries, and the geometries are, are huge, it's like, bleh, I can hardly even scroll it, as a matter of fact, I think we've just bogged, we've just bogged our text editor because, like I said, this is so hugely wrapping around and stuff, but in there, I suppose we don't need to see that anymore. In there, there's a materials property that happens to be an array of various materials, and we're accessing the color properties of those. We're accessing the color properties of those, which are expecting some like 16 digit number or something like that. So, or is that hex? Anyway, whatever. We're uh, using this technique to go from white, which is number sign FFFFF. Remember me six Fs 
and we're slicing that first one off so that it's just um, uh, the numbers themselves and we're converting it to something that the model will use. So anyway, don't worry too much about that. In the example that we brought this from, we were dynamically changing this. So with this technique right here, you could then go in and change the color or material of, of the model. And we did that with the color picker. So you can see that at zimjs.com slash three if you're interested in it. We're setting up a Zim Swiper. So here it is right here, of 500 by 500. If we didn't do frame.color and said, say, red or something, we would see where that swiper is. So there's the swiper, which means anytime we swipe in this area, but not in that area, we're going to capture uh, the swipe and we can change various properties with the swipe. So we're going to be doing that later. We made that uh, the same color as the frame. And we put it on the stage. This we're bringing in from an older model, so there's on um, the occasional thing, there's some things old, for instance, we don't need to say stage in there anymore. But Okay, so here's a three uh, object loader. And I think the reason why we haven't gone right up to the latest 3JS there is I think the object loader has been deprecated. And they're now requiring you to bring in with ES6 modules, they're requiring you to bring in something else that will do this. <laughs> anyway, uh, or texture, maybe that was the texture loader, perhaps the object loader is still around anyway, but they've really gone full hog and all those ES6 modules. And I just didn't feel like uploading or updating to that. So uh, we're bringing in an object loader when, and then we're, hmm, oh, it looks like we're parsing. So instead of loading a model, which we would normally load a JSON model just in with a loader.load, this is our loader.load, but because we've actually got our, our model data stored locally as a JavaScript variable, of um, JSON JavaScript variable, we're going to use the parse instead, and we're parsing that phone data. When we're ready, we're going to set. So we're setting the position with 3JS. All of the X, Ys, and Zs and stuff are on the position object. So this actually is the same as phone.position. Hmm, haven't been typing yet this morning. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. let's get those fingers ready. And uh, this is the X. This is the Y. So we could go dot Y is equal to minus 110. We're moving that down a little bit. And then we, uh, that, that would be fine as well. Uh, by default, the others will be zeros. Um, or you can use set to set them all. And then we're scene dot add phone. So scene is like the stage in a sense in 3JS, and we're adding the phone model which we've just loaded in and set a position. Okay, so that sets your position. Rotation is similar. Phone dot rotation dot whatever. Uh, probably scale is also similar. I, I can't remember for sure. We're getting a. Uh, I made the pictures. It's kind of weird. I made the pictures to fit a screenshot, but that the screenshot, uh, the phone had been scaled, so that didn't matter anyway. That got me, got me the proper aspect ratio. So in other words, I took a screenshot of the model. Uh, I cut out the the screen part of the model, <laughs> which was the phone, right? The phone, the screen of the phone, and then processed some pictures of Doctor Abstract dancing. And that's what we're loading in. So, right, sorry, we, we modified this a little bit when we brought it into the code pen example. So I'm just coming back and looking at the way we had it before. Uh, no big deal, I guess, whatever. We're using the three image utility to bring in a specific texture there. Down below, we're looping through di nine different pictures that are all in a assets and pick zero, or pick zero, pick one, pick two, pick three. So we're using the ES6 templating system there to bring in the index number as we loop, looping through I. And in the code pen version, we just did this and didn't bother loading in the zero one. The idea of loading in the zero one was maybe it would load this one first and we'd be able to see the model. Then we realize it's going to be calling all this stuff anyway. Uh, the only time, and then it will render. So I don't think there's any advantage in doing a two-step process anymore. That's why we 
converted into a one-step process, but whatever. Here we are loading in the first picture, and we're making, so this was with a, a texture loader, but like I said, now in the modern 3JS, there's a different approach. This approach doesn't work anymore. And then we're setting a material. So once you get a texture, that's the texture. Once you get a texture, we're setting a material to map on that texture. Or you could put in a color here. So if we said color colon red, that would make it red. I don't think we've overwritten that. Let's just have a, oh. Well, I think we got rid of the red in the other case. So now we see red inside of there. And we're still going to load a picture. And next time it comes in, we'll load the first one back again. But anyway, initially, that would be just loading a basic material that is red. Now, that material doesn't receive, that material does not receive lights or any lighting. But there's other materials like a Fong material that does a, no, a Fong and a Mesh Lambert. So Mesh Lambert material, these will receive lightings and shadows and reflections and, and things like that. But the basic material just puts a color on there. So if you made a cube of basic material, it would actually look kind of ugly because you can't see any of the edges of the cube. You know, the, the different sides don't have different shades. So, um, but anyway, that's Mesh basic material is fine for what we were doing, which was loading in a picture, assuming that we don't want any, that we don't want the picture to become lighter or darker. We always want it to stay looking just like the picture. All right, so that's a material. And here we're using 3JS as mentioned. So basically anything you can do in 3JS, you can now do here, but you're affecting the model that is being shown uh, inside of Zim, actually uh, on top of Zim in a sense but still controlled by Zim. Then we would make a geometry. So we've got a material. If, by the way, you made a color there, then you don't need a texture. So the only reason we're putting in a texture is so that we can then map that onto the material. And here's a geometry. Uh, we're using a plane in this case. There's also things like box and sphere and a whole bunch of different shapes, toruses and dodecahedrons, cones, cylinders tubes or pipes or tubes, I think. Anyway, so here's a 3JS plane geometry, and we're setting that to be the width and the height. I think we up increased this, upcreased it to four and four and four. That's how many uh, polygon vertices or whatever we are horizontally and vertically, and that can actually make a difference in the quality as the picture gets skewed. Um, it would skew more if it is just one, so we've increased that to four, so you'd get a, a nicer looking picture in this case. You almost can't tell, maybe you can't tell, I don't know, but that's it in theory. The idea is, especially with something like a sphere, if we only had four and four in a sphere, it would look like this big clunky, you know, trunk, 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 bunch of triangles thing, but if you increase that to 24 or 30 or something like that, then all of a sudden the sphere gets smoother and smoother because you're increasing the number of polygons that it was made with. But the more you do that, the more it slows down. So you want to you want to sort of balance that. You want to make it too high and bring it down until it starts to look bad, and bring it back up again, you know, so that it's the best looking but at the lowest number of polygons. So you could do that here. For instance, if we couldn't tell the difference between the two here, let's take a look. There's one picture. We'll zoom in on this F11. Okay, was this with four or with one? Okay, but you're going to be able to tell possibly as it goes on the angle here, can you see distortion? I don't really see distortion. I think that looks fine. Fine enough. Oh, that's the four one. And now we go back to one. And let's try it again. F11 here. So here's at one. And I don't think I see any difference there. So perhaps we could just leave it at one then. <laughs> All right. Uh, carrying on. We're setting the position of the picture. We had to be quite careful with this uh, in a few ways. Was it here? So it's a combination of, of these two things of getting the right width. As you see, we're using decimals in there. This uh, kind of scales it down so within the 3JS world it seems to be the right size to fit the model. 
and then this is positioning the Z. So that's how much out of the screen it comes. For instance, if we put that at 9, like that, for instance, we would it would come out of the screen more. And I don't, well, maybe I, I, I see it a little bit. I don't really see it. It's odd. Did I save that right? This is the Z. Uh, let's go with um, 12. You can see that. I thought it would see more of a difference there by looking at the, yeah, uh, oh, I see. So by the time I turned it around, the picture is only one-sided on the plane. So if I turn it around, it disappears. So you can't see it if you've turned too much, but I, I do see a little bit of a picture there. However, we could make that even uh, bigger. It seems like it's not as sensitive as I thought there. And we could also double side the picture. So there, there's the picture coming out of the plane. Now we've added the picture right here to the phone. So phone dot add pic. Whereas the phone we've added to the scene. So the scene is the basic, it's like the stage. And then we've added the phone to the stage. But here, instead of adding the pic to the stage, if we did, or the scene, sorry. If we added the pic to the scene, we would see something quite different. Uh, first of all, it, we, it isn't moved to the right place now, but there it is added to the scene. We position <coughs> the Y. We don't have to refresh here. And there it is. <laughs> Broken, but kind of interesting. <laughs> so that's the plane, and it's just cutting through the model. All right, undo some of that stuff. So we painstakingly adjusted this so that that plane seemed right against the, the black there. And then we had to, I suppose, the origin of the model is in a different place, or the X and Y of the, inside the model is in a different place, because we had to move that as well. All right, so we add the phone, or the pick to the phone. We're now accessing all of the other materials, so we just go through the same process where we're bringing in each uh, texture, making a material from it, and pushing that material into PIX. So PIX is now an array of materials, and then depending on what happens as we rotate it, we're just swapping out the material for the next material, in other words, the next picture. Down here is the indicator. We're using the indicator to control all of that because the indicator has a selected selected index. So if we're swiping, we adjust the indicator and then the indicator also changes the picture. Or if we use the indicator, we change the picture and the indicator actually animates and we change the picture when we animate. So that's what we're about to see, all that kind of stuff. So here's our indicator. We're making it interactive so that we can press on it. If it weren't interactive, we would see something like this. There's the indicator. As we swipe, the indicator still changes, but note that we can't click on the indicator to go to the next page. Often indicators, well, they're a bit small for an interface. It maybe shouldn't be your main interface. There should be an arrow here, or, or in this case, swiping. Uh, but sometimes indicators are also interactive themselves. Other times they just they're a display rather than an input, an output. Uh, okay, so we're setting it to interactive true. We're positioning it there, and when the indicator changes, we're disabling the swiper. So as the if you press on the indicator and make it change, so it changes when we press on it. Um, if you're pressing on it and you're wanting to spin the phone with the indicator, we don't want the people swiping it at the same time. Those two things will conflict with one another. So we're setting the swiper enabled to false. Later, we're going to animate, and we'll set the swiper enabled back to true when we're done animating. This idea there. So we're grabbing a rotation. This The rotation that we want to animate to, or we're creating a rotation here, actually, uh, is the indicate whichever one we've selected on, say number 20, or, well, we don't have 20, <laughs> say no, number 8. It would be 8 times 360. But our rotation in 3JS is in radians. So we're multiplying it by rad, which is the same as math dot 
math.py divided by 180. So rather than math.py divided by 180, if you want to convert to radians, you multiply it. Oops. You multiply it by rad. <laughs> Nothing like going through your typos and an undo. Huh? <laughs> multiply by rad. If you want to go the other way, from radians to degrees, you multiply it by deg, and those are zim constants. It's negative because we're, we're spinning um, counter... Well, I don't know. It depends how you want it. The right side is coming around, so I guess from the top that would be clockwise, but from the bottom, counterclockwise. So that happens to be a negative rotation. And uh, let's see. Then we're finding out how much of a difference between its current rotation. So that's phone rotation Y. So how much of a difference between where we want to rotate to and where the phone currently is. And we're going to use that difference right here, diff, to set the time. So the time is going to be that difference times however many, oh, we're converting degrees, 2.5. So it's that time times 2.5 degrees or something like that. Anyway, I wouldn't worry too much about that. It, although, you know, you, you got to think about things like that, but it's not really to do with the 3JS part. If we just said 1,000 each time, so this is going to do an animation over one second. And it probably looks pretty decent for the for for that when you go from one to the other. But now here I am going to go to the end. Okay, which is yeah, it's up to you. Do you want that? So this is basically just taking one second to go from anywhere to anywhere, and maybe you like that. But we kind of wanted it to go longer if you were going more rotations, and so that's what we're setting here. That kind of thing. All right, where else we get to? So there we are animating them. Now note the animate is not on, it's not the animate method. It's not on a Zim object. Like it's not uh, circle.animate or button.animate or whatever it may be. Because we're animating the phone and the phone is not a Zim object. The phone is a 3JS model. So we've gone to the animate function. Any any Zim method, like animate, wiggle, drag, those kinds of things, they started off as actually functions that would operate on CreateJS objects. Then in Zim 4, Zim 4, uh, we introduced the Zim 4 methods where we turned those functions into methods that would, and, and we brought most of, if not all, I guess we brought pretty well all of the CreateJS objects. We had already brought in most of them anyway because we needed to adjust them. So now we brought them in all and then gave them the Zim forth methods. So that's why circle.animate works, but also animate round bracket circle would work using the animate function. So in this case we're using the animate function and we're passing in a target. At that point you specify a target of anything. This could be an object literal, for instance. Anything that has properties you could pass into here. As a matter of fact, Zim works on HTML tags, for instance. Uh, we can animate HTML tags as well uh, with this technique. So there is, uh, we are animating the phone, and the property that we're going to animate is the, uh, the Y property, but unfortunately it's stored in the rotation. So we're rotating around the Y. Uh, which means we're not animating the property of the phone directly, but rather actually animating the rotation object in the phone, its Y position. Another way you could do that probably is to take phone.rotation, stick it there, and then animate the Y. I think, however, um, that doesn't seem to work. So there must be something that they're doing in 3JS that is odd, like a getter setter method on that or something. It's probably it. So rather than it being plain object, uh, well, anyway, I'm not sure what's going on there, but this technique works. As a matter of fact, we had to purposely build this technique so that we could do uh, what's called, I guess, a dot rotation, as in we're using the dot rotation. CreateJS has that too. We built it in um, as well. So anyway, there it is where we're animating the Y on the rotation of the phone to whatever we've asked for, the rotation position there. In that time, we set different types of easing. Uh, usually it's quad out and quad out, work, or quad in out, 
works fine as well. But uh, here, I'll show you what that looks like. I don't know if you'll be able to tell the difference. Quad, which is the default. Uh, actually, since that is the default, not quad, not squad, may as well comment it out, and then we'll see quad in out and see if you notice a difference. Is that one? Do you see a difference? Um, watch, w watch the beginning. The beginning is quite slow, and then it gets faster, 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 and then quite slow going out. Instead, we, we didn't want to wait quite as long, so we tried out a few different ones and ended up with the sign being their circular sign, there's various powers and stuff like that. So now it's not quite as slow in the beginning and it's slower in the middle. You see what I mean? If it's not quite as slow at the beginning and at the end, then it's going to also be slower in the middle. So it's fast. Um, uh, let's, oh, we don't want it going as fast in the middle. <laughs> we don't want it going um, as slow in the end. So we sped up the ends and we slowed down the middle. And that's what sign did for us. Okay, you know it, it is subtle, but there there definitely is a difference there. We chose when we're done. We enable the swiper. Now this is an important step that you you wouldn't know really uh, what to expect here or to do this, and you'd probably get a glitch that seemed you know you don't, didn't know don't know what's going on. The swiper is constantly setting because it, the swiper uses easing. It's um it's it's active all the time. You can't just stop the well. I mean, it's it's active unless you enabled false. But as soon as we enable it true, it already had an old value of where it thought it was, and what it's going to do is try and then damp to the new value of of where it actually uh, of, of where it is now, and that conflicts or it it, it sort of jumps back to where the the swiper thought it was. Do you want to see? I'll show you. So turn that off and let's see. So that it will appear to swipe just fine. So say we swipe to there and then we animate it to here. And then watch, we're going to swipe. Oh, nothing happened. Uh, maybe it was the other way around. Uh, so it's working just fine now. Uh, oh, there. You see that? Ah, there we go. All of a sudden when it turned. Oh, maybe it was, um, maybe it's when we spin it this way. Come to here. And no, it wasn't an up and down. Anyway, you, you saw it go that once. It's like I said, it's a glitch um, that happens at some point. Can't quite figure out when it was going there. But it, what we need to do is make sure that we go make, turn the swiper immediately to where the new phone rotation is. So anytime you adjust a location or a rotation of something outside the swiper using some other technique like animation, uh, then you want to set the that swiper immediate value and it will then sort of set it there without actually trying to dampen it to there. Otherwise the swiper would try and damp your emotion to there. Okay, so uh, we're setting the indicator to zero. Otherwise, you don't get an indicator, I don't think. Let's check it out. So, oh, we did. Could be wrong when it got loaded. Maybe there was something in the load where we set that. Uh, so where would that load be? These loads, indicator. Do you see another indicator anywhere? Here, maybe, in the ticker. Into, yeah, okay, that's it. So if we didn't have that, and we didn't have this, then we have no indicator, and actually no image there either. But uh, maybe we don't need that anymore if it's, it's being done in here. So what is the ticker doing? We've got this ticker that's added, and I think what we did is in the code pen version, we move the swiper up so that you can see what the swiper does before we get into all of this. So we haven't even seen the swiper yet, and yet we're sort of working with it, but that's okay. Anyway, the um, ticker says, set the indicator, or let the new indicator value, no, don't set it yet, but just sort of set a new indicator value to 
whatever our rotation is. Now we want to change the indicator when the phone is turned around 180 degrees. So that's, that's when the phone is at the back and that's when we want to change the image. So we thought we'd just consolidate that. When we change the image, when it's at the back, we're also going to change the indicator, as you can see here. Let me refresh here. Save this. Refresh here. And watch when the indicator changes. Bing! Right there. So when the phone is at the back, that's when the image changes. And here it goes again. Bing! Okay. And we're doing some tricks to that. We're flooring it to make sure that if we've rotated it around past, uh, we could keep on rotating it. Or maybe we got rid of that. We'll, we'll take a look at how we got rid of that down below here. But anyway, just making sure that that all works properly. And then if the indicator dot selected index is not equal to whatever this is telling us the indicator should be, then we change it. So we're not constantly setting the indicator to that. That would just be up, updating the indicator for no reason, really. If it's the same setting, why update it again? So basically, we're just checking on that to make sure we're not updating it more than we need to. And more so than, like, the indicator probably wouldn't really care if you did that, but what might care is loading this material on each time. There'd be no reason to set the material again if the, in, if the indicator number's not changed. So here's how we can dynamically set the material of the picture. So remember, the pick is the plane up on top there. So here's, uh, not that one, pick right here. So... Mm pick is the, the mesh, which is the plane, the pick geometry, which is the plane geometry here. So pick is the plane, not the model. The phone is the model. So down below here, we are setting the picks material to whatever, whatever the indicators on in the picks array. Cool, huh? And then down below, we've got the swiper. So this is the Zim swiper, finally. We're saying, hey, when you swipe on the swiper rect, set the phone's rotation, X. This is a min. Uh, there's a sensitivity. This is a sensitivity. So how sensitive is it? Uh, let's try one and see what the rotation sensitivity looks like now. A little bit too sensitive, wouldn't you say? <laughs> uh, and if we had 0 0.001, let's try it now. Uh, uh, uh. So we have to swipe too much to get this to go. That up and down still not too bad. We did change the, the sensitivity up and down. Okay, so that's too much swiping. So you just sort of balance that or bracket it there. And point uh, one, let's see what we've got. There we go. Which almost matches the motion. You see how if I if I pick up this thing on the edge here, oh, I missed it on the edge. Why can't I pick on the edge? Oh, I th sorry, this is the first one. I can't rotate farther than that. That is of interest, actually. I don't know if you noticed, but when we bring it back to position one, there it is facing us but we can still swipe more rotation. And I did that on purpose because I found it awkward to be here on our front one and be able to turn the phone this way up and down, but not turn it any more that way. It didn't allow you to kind of just look at it naturally. So we did add that extra turn on the min. Well, we can see that. Here's the min and the max right here. So we're setting the min, <laughs> lovely, uh, to this value. But if we set that to zero, oh no, zero goes on the other side. So it's actually flipped. There it is. Uh, since the rotation is negative, the min is going to be 8 times 360 in the negative, roughly, plus these 40s. Uh, this is the max, which is zero. So zero is our max. And if we set zero to the max, we can't spin it anymore that way. See, it can only spin this way, and it just stops there. 
like I said, I found this a little bit unnatural because I can't see the full uh, rotation of that. So we just change the min to be 40. This is going in the positive. If zero is the max, 40 is bigger, 40 degrees, but times radians. If you forget the radians and say 40 degrees, then uh, we're dealing with, uh, that's just not helpful. It keeps spinning that way. You know, and that is going to go 40 degrees is a lot of spin that way. So that's 40 um, degrees converted into radians. Okay, so we talked about that one. Uh, the rotation about the x is here. If uh, we've set a minimum of minus 0.2, so that's, uh, let's try 1.2. That's also radians, I believe, there. So that means 1.2 is 1.2 radians. And now we can uh, really push that phone back like that. And yeah, it's still spinning. <laughs> but at that point, it takes too much to slide it back. So we'd have to increase the... You see what I mean? I feel like uh, really working there. We would increase this to say 0.1 or 0.01, and then you would have an easier way to slide it back, like so. Which actually is kind of cool, but it's just more than we needed. So we left it just sliding back a little bit, and uh, we made it not so sensitive because otherwise, as you as you start to go to rotate like this, you accidentally slide it back, and you know, and then it's a little bit awkward to be doing both. So we just have a little bit of a tilt that operates, right? And yet, most of the time, you don't even notice it as you're as you're doing your spin here. Okay, how we doing? How's everybody out there? Yeah, getting ready to wrap this thing up. Okay, so that was the swiper stuff. Here's a couple lights. It won't matter too much. Well, it might matter. It, well, I'm sure it will matter. Um, but I was going to say it won't matter. It won't matter to the plane, but it would matter to the model. So there's the model with no lights. <laughs> it's basically you can't see it. It's dark. It looks like on the model is funny. There's the little bits of green, see-through stuff. The model seems to have this place where you can actually see through the background, but whatever. That's roughly what it would look like on black. And then we brought in a light here, like so. Not too bad. You see that? That's where the light is. So we're tilting it back and actually hitting the reflection of the light. That's the type of the material that the model used. It would not be a basic material. It must be something like a Lambert or a Fong. And we refresh this. And now we've got more light everywhere. You can really see the reflection on the back there. Isn't that nice? So those are the lights. And these are three JS, so different uh, lights. And we're positioning them, and then we're adding them. This one gets position 0 in the x, 250 in the y, so that's uh, down, no, up, I think, 250 in the y, and then uh, out from the screen. And this one is similar, except we're moving it in the x position 100 over to the right-hand side. And that ends that! Woohoo! So, uh, how was that? This has been a Zim Explore, and I am Dr. Abstract. It was uh, lovely to hang out here with you and talk about Zim, and seeing 3JS inside of Zim. You can go to CodePen and look up, I think it's a DanZen CodePen, so codepen.io slash DanZen and see that on the code pen, give it a heart there, fork it, try it out there, and code pen as well. Have a great day or night. See you later.